Good morning. Hey, good people. My name is Kevin Lett. This is Dr. Naima Lett. Hello. And we're co-pastors of Hope in the Hills mm -hmm. here in Beverly Hills. Yes. Welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Yeah, we'll be back out in the streets. We are. It's starting to cool <laughs> yeah, down just a touch. Just a little bit. Thank y'all for uh, joining us on our ride along last week. Wasn't that fun? Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, we thank you for the so feedback. Many, yeah, yeah, heard from so many of you uh, that you enjoyed it as well. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll have to do it again sometime, sir. Sure. Sounds good. <laughs> well, thank you all for liking and sharing and thank being you. here with us. We appreciate it. And all of the feedback that you've given us, mm -hmm. keep it up. Thank you, uh, thank we, you. We do appreciate that. And we're going to pray, then we'll get into the message, yes. and then we'll wrap up at the end. Now, our niece is not with us I know, this week. She's back at Spelman. She's back in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, so, so uh, blessings to all of the students that are returning to college and returning to school. We okay. hope that you'll have a productive school year yes. and that the Lord will bless you. Um, Bless immeasurably, you you. <laughs> immeasurably. Uh, make, it, make his face shine upon you. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> okay. Now right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this beautiful Sunday. Thank you for enabling us to come together again. We continue to intercede and pray for our country and all that is going on. We ask, Lord, that you would be with us. We also continue to pray, Lord God, for everyone that needs your healing touch today, for everyone who needs financial care, for everyone, Lord, that just needs to, to hear from you, please speak, Lord. Your, servant is, your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you've been traveling with us this summer, then you know that we have been delving all into conflict and conflict resolution, church hurt and church healing. <laughs> We've just been in it. But we're not the only ones, right? The church isn't the only one that's been at odds. Right now, our Actus Union sag aftra is on strike. Workers have walked off the jobs. This has to do with disputes over wages, over health insurance, over uh, artificial intelligence. Our writers union, the Writers Guild of America, is on strike. But we're not the only ones that walked off the job. Hotel workers have walked off the job. Restaurant workers have walked off the job. City workers have walked off the job. Media correspondents are calling this summer the summer of discontent. Folks are just tired and fed up. People, by the time we get to a walk-off, it means that negotiations have broken all the way down, an impasse has been reached, all sides are at their end, and things are falling apart. This is what we see in this particular scripture that we look at today. This is in, in the letter of Philippians. Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, and apparently an impasse has been reached. Okay, <laughs> go to chapter four, chapter four, chapter four, verse two, chapter four, verse two. He says, I plead with you, Rhodia, and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. This disagreement between Eurodia and Syntyche has gotten so bad that the apostle has to write and say, help. <laughs> he doesn't even call his uh, faithful friend by name. He's literally saying, you know who you are. Help him, help him, help him. This disagreement has gotten so bad, it has obviously spilled over into the mechanisms of the church actually working so much so that the local pastors have not been able to resolve it so that Paul, the apostle, is hearing about it while he's imprisoned. <laughs> what kind of disagreement has gone off that the apostle has got to hear about it and then write in to ask for help in terms of the mediation? Like, listen, help them, help them, because they have served with me along with the others. Help them, help them, because this is all one long letter. I can't help but think that summer chapter two is meant for the same situation. Do you see what he writes? Chapter two, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being, again, like-minded, mm -hmm, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. He's calling upon unity. Get it together, people. Right? Three, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, 
Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking out to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the other. And he goes on to make a case for, hey, we need to be like Christ and humble ourselves and walk in humility. Now, okay, a couple of different things. This passage many times has been used to um, convince people who are in relationships, abusive relationships, to stay in those relationships. We're not doing that. Hope in the Hills, we don't do that at Hope in the Hills. Usually when you have female pastors, we are, we're cut from a different cloth. <laughs> we value life. We go tell you to live. If you are in a situation and uh, you are not safe, we need you to get out of that situation. Okay, we need you to live, right? Um, so we're never going to use this particular scripture to try to tell you, uh, humble yourself and, and sit up under someone who's abusing you. That's not what we're saying. Okay, clear. All right. Now, beyond that, in most disagreements, there's a place where we can begin to come into like mindedness, but it takes, it takes, it usually will take, turn back over to chapter four, some help. <laughs> usually it takes a mediator, usually it takes a counselor, usually it takes a third party. In some cases it takes the law, but usually it takes a third party because when things have broken down so much so like they have done with Eurodia and Syntyche, when things have broken down that much, you're no longer able to hear one another, right? When things have broken down the way that they have between the writers and the producers and the actors and the producers, you've got to have a third party. You've got to have somebody mediating so that people can be heard. Conflict Resolution 101, so that people can be heard and so that we can begin to reach that other C word that nobody likes, compromise compromise right now this is not a message about compromising your faith this is not a message about compromising and doing things wrong compromising what God has told you to do compromising and being obedient none of that this is about when there's a disagreement between parties the way that we reach an agreement is usually focusing on a win-win where each party is able to come away one being heard and understood and two getting some of what they're asking for. When we compromise, we are actually saying, this is what I need. The other person is saying, this is what I need. And then we work, see how we can mutually work towards meeting both of those needs. And it usually takes a little give and take, right? But that happens most of the time through some help. <laughs> and in Paul's case, he says to my true companion, get in there and help these women. <laughs> in our cases, with the unions and the producers or the restaurant workers and the hotel workers and those who employ them, in many of these cases, mediators are brought in, attorneys are brought in to be able to negotiate and to go back and forth over the terms so that each person feels heard and understood and needs are met. Now, here's what's key. In order for each person to feel heard and understood, that means that we actually have to listen. It doesn't tell us in this scripture what Eurodia and Syntyche were fighting over, but what Paul says is, I plead with you to be of the same mind in the Lord. So what Paul is doing is pleading with them and drawing them to a common ground, right, of which they can begin the negotiation. A common ground being, please be of the same mind in the Lord. Whatever the disagreement is, let's first agree that we're all in the Lord, that we have all served together, that we're all, that we're all coming from the same place. This is why in another letter he writes, don't be unequally yoked in your business relationships and your other relationships. It's very, very difficult. In this case, you wrote it, sent a key. We, we're not sure how that, we're not sure how that all needed. I hope, I hope these sisters got it together. <laughs> I hope the true companion was able to bring them together and be able to work through things. Um, I have faith and hope that uh, at some point our actors union, writers union will be able to negotiate with the producers and reach some terms that each side feels understood and heard and needs are met. 
and or the entire system is overhauled and we're able to creatively come up with some new terms all together, right? <laughs> Sometimes the whole system needs to be dismantled and put back together again in a new way that is not built upon a slavery mindset, right? That's an entirely different message. Y'all hear that beeping? I saw an ice cream truck. <laughs> nah, ain't no way I'll be able to go and get no ice cream. I have not been to an ice cream truck yet that had plant-based options. Um, howsoever, it is still summertime. Though I am grateful that it has gotten a little bit cooler, so thank God for that closing. The strikes will continue and people will continue to walk off the job if we feel as if we're being exploited and taken advantage of. What is the base need and is that being met? Many times within the, the, the conflicts that have happened, church hurt, church conflict is not new. You can see Euodia and Syntyche fighting in the first century. They just planted this church in Philippi. <laughs> they just planted a church already, people fighting. Whenever you have people together, there's going to be conflict. But because we know that, shouldn't we get good at conflict resolution and compromise? Shouldn't we get good at working through things? Shouldn't we get good at asking for help, asking for counseling, asking for mediators to help us out? Shouldn't we get really good at this? Our churches should not be falling apart because of conflict anymore. We should all be learning how to become experts at resolving conflict. Our conflicts with one another, our conflicts with others, we should be walking in the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling ourselves to others, working through offenses, forgiving, processing, right? We as followers of Christ should not be the most hate-filled, judgmental, toxic people in the room. We should be the ones humbling ourselves and running towards reconciliation. Again, unless you are in danger. And if that's the case, run in the other direction. <laughs> I know this is a short message, but I hope that you're hearing me. And I hope that we are all able to begin to become experts, especially in our relationships. I hope that we will become experts at negotiating win-win situations where everyone feels seen and heard and understood. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for everything that's going on in terms of the summer of discontent and, uh, and folks just being fed up and walking off and doing what has to be done. But we do pray that we will all be able to come back to the negotiation tables and work towards compromise that helps each one of us feel like we are seen and heard and understood. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're back. Yes. You and I T Y people. <laughs> you and I T Y. You and I T Y. Yes. That's it. It is fifty years of hip hop. Years of hip hop. Come so on now. So we're celebrating. We are that generation. That's if y'all right. didn't know. That's right. That's us. Loving it. Loving yeah, it. Yeah. So uh, we we celebrate that, and uh, we we thank you guys. Yeah. Just for all your support, all your love, mm -hmm. uh, just for your consistency, thank you. and your ties and your offerings mm -hmm. and your prayers and uh, just everything that you're doing to help keep this ministry going. Thank you. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, we do this for the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not about us. And so for those of you who are just rocking with us and riding with us, yeah. um, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. And so family, friends alike, extended family, we love you guys. Thank you. Uh, if you need to know how to give and support the work of the ministry, mm -hmm. uh, you can go to hopeinthehills.org or .net slash give mm -hmm. and then you'll see all the options there available to you you can also for your convenience text hope in the hills all one word no spaces to 44321 yes. and you'll see all the same options available to you as well Absolutely. so we hope you guys have a blessed week and um ha we said it last week but happy birthday to all the leos yes happy uh, birthday happy birthday rashid just had a birthday yes andrea has a birthday coming up i know we wished sean a happy birthday but for some reason if you didn't see this last week know that we are wishing a happy birthdays and to everyone that we did not call by name uh happy birthday you know well. who you are yeah okay <laughs> it's getting louder here <laughs> all right y'all take care we'll see y'all love you guys Peace.